In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the derivative of logarithmic and exponential functions. So first, let's take a look at the derivative of the natural logarithmic function. So if we let u be a differentiable function of x, we're going to be using this idea in this second definition over here. Um, and that's basically just using the chain rule. So if we're trying to take the derivative of the natural log of x, that's just going to end up being 1 over x. And this is true for values of x that are greater than 0. Uh, this comes into play simply because the argument for the logarithm, right, the logarithm is only defined for values of x that are greater than zero. So the second definition says if I'm taking the derivative, again, with respect to x of the natural log of u, uh, it's going to be 1 over u, and since u is a function of x, it'll be times the derivative of u with respect to x, which basically just gives me the derivative of u divided by u. And again, this is for values of u that are greater than zero because that's going to be where this function is defined. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of finding the derivative that involves natural logarithmic functions. So in this first one, we want to find the derivative of y equals the natural log of 2x cubed. Now in this situation, the 2x cubed is not just a simple x. It's not just the natural log of x. That means that we're going to have to use the chain rule. So this is essentially the value of u, right? It's like the natural log of u. So if we recall, this tells me that my derivative should be uh, 1 over the inside function, so 2x cubed, times the derivative of my inside function. So that's going to be 3x squared. Sorry, 6x squared. My mistake, 6x squared. Um, so go ahead and just do some simplifying. Uh, the 2 and 6 can reduce to be 3. We have an x squared and an x cubed, so it's going to simplify to be 3 over x. So my derivative here, y prime, is just going to be 3 over x. In this situation, we're going to have to use the product rule. And the reason why we're going to use product rule is because we have two functions of x that are being multiplied. So that tells us we're going to have to use the product rule here. So product rule says it's the first function times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of natural log we just said was 1 over x. Uh, plus the second function, natural log of x, times the derivative of the first, which is 2x. Um, x squared times 1 over x, that's just going to leave me with an x. And then we're going to have plus 2x natural log of x. You could stop here, but if you wanted, you could also factor out an x here. Um, so we'd get this would be equal to x times 1 plus 2 times the natural log of x. And if you did this, uh, you might notice that you could use the power rule and say that this is just going to be equal to x times 1 plus the natural log of x squared by using, moving the 2 up as an exponent here. Um, I would take this as an answer, but this all three of these would be acceptable. So I'm going to actually write the last one as my derivative. So it's going to be x times 1 plus the natural log of x squared would be the derivative of this. Um, and then in this one, we're going to actually have chain rule twice. Uh, the first thing that we're going to be taking the derivative of and we're going to be looking at is um, my outside function is something squared. So we're going to leave all of that, the natural log, inside alone. So how do I take the derivative of something squared? Well, it's just going to be 2 times that something. So in this case, it's natural log of x plus 5 all of that to the first power. So I don't need to write that. Um, so that's the derivative of the outside, leaving the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside is going to be 1 over. So the inside in this situation is going to just be this x plus 5 here. So it's 1 over x plus 5, because that's the derivative of the natural log there. So 1 over x plus 5. Um, times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x plus 5 is just going to be 1. And in doing our simplifying, we end up with uh, y prime equaling 2 natural log of the quantity x plus 5. All of this divided by x plus 5. Um, and then these x plus 5s, even though it looks like this is multiplying, remember this is the argument of your natural log, so you can't cancel these. This would just be our final result. 
Now, what if you're dealing with a function that is not a natural log, but instead is just a, a logarithm with a different base? So if we said let a be a positive real number such that a is not equal to 1, and let u be a differentiable function of x, then these two things hold. So if I'm trying to find the derivative of a logarithmic function with base a, so log base a of x, I get 1 over x times the natural log of a. So notice, in your um, in your derivative, you end up still getting the 1 over x that we see from a natural logarithm. And then we have the natural log of a here, where a is the base that was in our log. And this actually means that uh, this with this definition, we could actually use the um, log base e, which is the natural log, and evaluate the same way, right? Because we'd get 1 over x times the uh, natural log of e, but the natural log of e is just 1, and that's what would give us the 1 over x. So we actually still get the same uh, derivative using this if a was equal to e. So that's a interesting thing to note. And if u is a function of x, basically it's just saying use the chain rule. So we get 1 over u times the natural log of our base again, times the derivative of u. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this example. So we have chain rule here because the inside is not just an x. So it's going to be log base 2 of something. So the derivative, the derivative of y with respect to x, I'm just going to use this notation this time, it's going to be 1 over uh, 1 over the inside function, which is 4x squared, times the natural log of our base, so times the natural log of 2. And then since we have to use chain rule, now it's going to be times the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside is going to be 8x. And then doing a little bit of simplifying, we will see that uh, 8 and 4, that can reduce to be a 2. This x can cancel with one of those x's. And ultimately, we will end up with uh, 2 in the numerator divided by, sorry, divided by x times the natural log of 2. So this would end up being uh, the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be 2 divided by x times the natural log of 2. Again, another problem where we're going to be using the chain rule uh, because the inside function is not just an x. So this is our u. So it's going to be um, y, y prime is going to be 1 over u, which is the cosecant here, cosecant of x, uh, times the natural log of our base, times the natural log of 4. And then all of this is times the derivative of the inside. So the inside is the cosecant. Uh, which is negative cosecant x, cotangent x. Um, and we can get some canceling again. This cosecant is going to cancel with that cosecant, ultimately leaving me with uh, y prime being the opposite of the cotangent of x divided by the natural log of 4. All right, and then the last definition that we're going to be looking at in this video is the derivative of an exponential function. So if we let a be a positive real number again, such that it's not one, and then u is a differentiable function of x, these two can, uh, things will hold. So the derivative of a exponential function is going to be a to the x times the natural log of the base here. And this also again works for e to the x. Remember we said that the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. But using this, we would see that that still holds. right? So the derivative of e to the x is going to be e to the x times the natural log of e. Again, this is 1, so we just get e to the x. So that holds for that definition that we've learned before as well. Um, and again, basically, this is just saying use the chain rule. So if you're taking the derivative of a to some function of x, it's going to be a to that function of x times the natural log of our base. And then again, we have to multiply by the derivative of the function u with respect to x. So let's go ahead and try this example. So for this example, we have y equals 2 to the 3t minus 4t. 
Uh, for this first one, we're going to have to use the chain rule because of that 3t not just being a t. But the second one is pretty straightforward, and we can just take its derivative uh, and subtract it from the derivative of this. So what is the derivative here? So the derivative of y with respect to t, now it's not with respect to x, is going to be, um, it's going to be the same function that we started with, 2 to the 3t times the natural log of the base. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So this isn't just a regular old t or an x. So we have to multiply by its derivative. Uh, the derivative of 3t is just 3. And then all of that is going to be minus the derivative of 4t, which is just 4. Uh, cleaning this up a little bit, we would get that the derivative of y with respect to t is going to be, I'll say this is 3 natural log of 2 times 2 to the 3t, all of this, minus 4. Uh, we could do some manipulation of this and say that this is uh, the natural log of 2 cubed, right? The natural log of 2 cubed using the power rule or the natural log of 8. But we don't really have to. We are perfectly happy to accept this as our final answer.